Hi again. Hi. Um, so, what would I, as a straight, cisgender, biological female, know about being transsexual or being transgender? Let's just say being transgender or being transsexual. What would I know about that? I have previously made um, a video about transgender or reassignment surgery um, and this is prefacing that to basically give you an understanding of where I'm coming from and how would I know anything about anything like this. If I've been cisgender my whole life then how would I know about being anything like that? Well what what frame of reference do I have? Okay I'm gonna tell you. Um, I'm from South Africa um, and I went to go and live and work in Thailand, Thailand, uh, from 2006 until 2014. So a total of eight years, eight years living and working in Thailand. And for all of those eight years, I stayed pretty much in the same apartment block <laughs> in the middle of Bangkok, in the middle of Bangkok, Krong Thep as, or Krong, Krong, Krong Thep, as the Thai people would say, right? Stayed there for eight years, uh, lived and worked, loved it. Uh, my job, uh, I was teaching English to students of uh, two different high schools. So that was my professional life, I was teaching. And these were the years where I was, uh, if I think about it, I was uh, 26, 27 at the time. And I'll tell you, I was still a party animal. My party animal spirit had not died down. Um, in South Africa, we have a very amazing and uh, vibrant social life. And um, Thailand is, is amazing, an amazing place to, to have a social life, especially if you have foreigner friends as well as Thai friends and I have always had both um, as long as I've lived there. Uh, the later years towards when I left I was pretty much hanging out all with Thai people. Some of my best friends in the world have been Thai people. Yeah, part of my heart is in Thailand. And so the years that I was there and I'm not talking about my work life, I'm talking about the party animal life, I'm talking about the years where I would still look forward to going out and uh, drinking, yes, drinking, and my thing is dancing. I know Asian people don't really dance, they're more into singing, right? But I was always into dancing, like coming from South Africa, if you go out at night and if you're going to clubs and nightclubs and you're having fun with your friends, you're dancing. There's, there's dancing at some point, okay? But coming to Asia, they don't really do that. And when I was in Bangkok, I was always looking for clubs where people danced you know like in south africa we we have it, it, it's not like we we go out to clubs to meet a person and then go home with them no like my my thing was often i just want to be in a place where there's lots of people and there's lots of music and the music is awesome and we can just dance that that was part of the most the, the biggest fun for me so i would always be looking for good places to go out dancing not everybody, not all my Western friends agreed with that. Many of them wanted to just go to a bar and just sit there and drink. Now to me, I, at that age, I could not think of a more boring thing to do with my free hours. Um, I'm exceptionally jealous of my free time. I do not want to be wasting a second of my free time sitting on my butt drinking beers until, you know, I'm legless and I need to go home. No. So anyway, over the years, um, I'm, I, I got to know lots of people and the people that I found that I had the most fun going out with, going out, partying, and dancing, and yes, drinking alcohol, were some of my Thai best friends. And one of them I went out with on a regular basis. We would go out maybe two times a week, twice a week and maybe sometimes three times a week. Sure, it's crazy crazy for a working person but somehow I managed to do it I would just peel myself off the bed in the morning and just march to work and do it and then go home and die a quiet death when I got home basically so um, 
Friday night, sure, going out. Saturday night, sure, going out. And maybe it would be like a Wednesday or a Thursday of that week too. So let's just say on average, I was going out like three times a week. Okay. And uh, going out three times a week and dancing and playing pool and drinking and just enjoying the whole thing. And of course, being there in Bangkok, in Thailand, and especially um, if any of you have traveled before to Thailand, you, you might know Khao San Road. You might know Sukhumvit, Soy's, etc. Soy 4, Soy 22, Soy Cowboy, and so, and so on and so forth. These are all roads where there's a lot of entertainment. There's a lot of bars and restaurants and clubs where people could go and hang out. Um, so I was going out a lot. And I found my crew. I found the people that I could go and have a party with. I could dance with. There was never any uh, argument about where we wanted to go. We were usually on the same level. We were always uh, in sync with each other in this way. Anyway, so I had this amazing life. I lived this amazing, like, I had a fantastic uh, work environment. I loved the kids and the students that I worked in. Um, that I Sorry, maybe I just have to explain something. I keep rubbing my nose. It's because it's summertime and I have five cats and they're all molting at the same time. All their winter, their soft winter fur is coming out and it's sort of flying around the house. And no matter how much sweeping and dusting I do, there's always more coming. So that's why I keep doing this. I'm not, I'm not a coke head. Okay. Anyway, so basically, I loved my professional life. I loved what I was doing. I loved the kids I was teaching. That was going really well. And then I had this really, really vibrant social life too. And I didn't have a boyfriend at the time because mm, basically Thailand at that time and up until that time, if you look at Thailand, it's a great place to go on holiday. It's absolutely beautiful. The food is amazing. The people are friendly and lovely. And there's that whole sex tourist part of it. Yes, there is. Um, a lot of their, uh, the income of the country did come from uh, the sex industry, basically, before. And that the, uh, not all places are outfitted just for males, but a large section of what was on offer or out there at nighttime, um, it, it's suited to the male. It just is. And um, especially a white male, a white first world country male living and working in Thailand. He's, uh, he's gonna, he's always, with, probably within two weeks of landing on the continent, on, on land in Thailand, he's gonna have a girlfriend. He's just gonna have a girlfriend. And it's not for him searching for one, it's for them flocking to him and he gets the choice of whoever he likes best. That's just the way the country has worked. I'm not sure now, like uh, COVID or post-COVID era, but before that, that's just how it worked. So Thailand is, it is or was the probably heaven place for white males to go because the women just love the white skin. They love the white skin. And a Western male is probably less likely to cheat on them or uh, go looking around for other females than the Thai male. And that's just a generalization. That is a generalization, but even in their culture, they will say this too. They will echo this. Mm. Um, oh yeah. And so I, I, I experienced the day life and I experienced the night life right the nightlife and because I was going out so frequently you get to see the same faces um, if, if you're just on holiday there you won't notice this kind of thing anywhere if you're just going on holiday you won't notice the the familiar faces you won't notice people's patterns and habits okay but since I lived there and since I worked there I had certain circles I had certain routes that I'd usually take certain places I'd normally go with my friends and um, you just notice things over time and of course when you're going out you also start to see the other people you you start to notice 
the faces if you've seen them before and you see them come back again and they're more or they're frequent and you know that you come here as often as they do you just start to notice people's habits and the circles that they move in and um, what they do and that kind of thing and so just watching the patterns and the demographics of different people coming coming in and going out and moving around in like the social nightlife area is really interesting and something I noticed time and time again ever since I landed in Thailand and I saw lady boys lady boys the most drop dead gorgeous creatures on the face of the planet the average supermodel the average and no actually let me just say let me say a high level supermodel is probably on par with a just above average lady boy i will say that again high level supermodel is usually in my eyes on par with a just above average lady boy or transsexual if if you prefer to think of it that way just on average they are gorgeous i think the thai dna as well the thai thai genetics is very is largely slim not all but largely slim uh, their facial features are finer and softer than than some other ethnicities um for, and like slim bones fine featured slim boned so when you have a gorgeous thai female she's so feminine looking she's extremely feminine looking and so if you have a very slim young man or young uh, boy growing up and he decides he wants to go transsexual or he wants to go lady boy when he transforms you you can't you have to work very hard to tell the difference you have to pay close attention here to the is it larynx or pharynx this but i'm say pharynx right uh, the voice box you have to pay attention to the size of the hands and then the brow bones here what these brow bones here are doing because normally in females this is going to be flat right like you can see here but on a male the brow bone is going to come forward a bit right yeah and so you learn to see these things more easily as you're in that environment more often so the lady boys man i haven't seen i i don't know i would be hard pushed to find anyone else on the planet just on average who looks just as aesthetically beautiful as these people um and as you probably know thai 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 lady boys are largely just accepted in their society they could work a bank job just as long as they present well and they they wear the uniform and they you know they look nice job done as long as they they present well and they pitch up at work and they do their job there's no problem with them and there hasn't been for a very long time so yeah these 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 people boy girl uh, the, the interesting thing about lady boys is they actually don't mind they don't mind if you call them boy or girl they don't mind if you say he or she they're just like yeah i you know it's it is con they re they recognize that it's confusing so they're just like whatever don't care my pen lie my pen lie really they they're over it they, they they don't care they they know things are confusing so you know they don't try and make it harder yeah so mm. and so anyway going back to my time in south africa when i was in south africa I'd always, I'd always noticed that some of the most fun clubs or nightclubs to go to, the most fun in the world, were the gay ones. The gay nightclubs in Cape Town were the most fun, safe places for me as a female to be. When I finished bar work at about 2 a.m. Um, on a particular road in Cape Town that I was working before, I usually didn't want to like go home immediately right then. I just wanted to like, sort of like come down a little bit, you know, from all the busy working. And I just wanted to go somewhere and have some of my own fun, right? So every, I mean, I, I could choose and maybe try and go to a few different nightclubs. But I always zoned in on Bronx. Bronx was the name, Bronx. 
and that was the the gay club that was closest there and I zoned in on Bronx and I went in there one day and I never regretted it they played the best music their bar people were so friendly and sweet and everybody there was there to have a fantastic time and all the guys there were happy and like probably all over each other but I didn't mind because I just wanted to like be there and I didn't want to be accosted or anything I didn't want to have to like deal with somebody you know getting in my my face about anything I just wanted to go in there and have fun and dance right and this place was the best place for me at that time and I was probably I was probably 22 23 when when I was in Cape Town at that time and Bronx the, the gay the gay club was the best place so much fun and the best music they have such good music taste argue with me about that if you want to in the comment section anyway so that was my memory of uh, the gay crowd and the, the gay club the gay clubs that I'd been to in Cape Town and so when I was living and working in Bangkok um, I and I saw the lady boys I was just like wow this is just like you know this is like if, if the gay people were cool in South Africa he, here in Thailand they've, they're, they're gonna be amazing right they're gonna be like gay on steroids kind of thing they're, they're gonna be amazing people and I went out looking for the, the equivalent gay clubs where people will be having so much fun and what I noticed was the gay clubs in Bangkok Thailand do not want women they do not want straight women they do not want cisgender people uh, they, they're fine with cisgender male all the guys there it's if you go into a gay club you hardly ever see females I don't know if, if maybe there's some lesbians that go in there I'm not sure but it's largely gay boys gay gay men and gay gay guys young guys and I got a totally different vibe going into the gay club in Bangkok Thailand than I did in going into a gay club in South Africa in South Africa it was welcoming it was come party with us we don't care kind of thing but in Thailand it was like what are you doing here kind of thing that's the vibe it was like it was like a mean girl vibe I got mean girl vibe I got mean girl vibe from the gay guys in Thailand I did I really did I didn't hold them against I didn't hold it against them you know that's that's their territory fine but I really like if I if when I was going to the gay clubs, I wasn't thinking I'm gonna I'm gonna turn them in here. I'm... I had no intentions of like going there, going in there and finding a man and you know getting him to turn or come with me. Kind of no, no. I had absolutely no interest in doing that. I wanted to find a place where nobody would pay any attention to me and everybody was having fun. Well, everybody was having fun, but it felt like competition it felt like high competition gay clubs in Bangkok Thailand are high competition for the male bodies in there high competition and some cisgender female sitting there drinking her screwdriver is like it's just an obstacle you, you're just like your scenery that's getting in the way of other people really that's that's the vibe that I got and I was just I remember like going there one time with a gay friend of mine uh, he was French and he was there with his Thai boyfriend at the time but I remember just being in there and feeling really like ooh this is not Cape Town man this is not Cape Town this is not Kansas this is not Cape Town a different vibe here I, f I felt like I shouldn't be there I shouldn't be there and I probably lasted an hour and a half max and then I really felt like no I'm not wanted here at all and not even for like me me giving positive vibe no no this is all business here this is a, probably I'm going to use the word meat market it was more meat markety and so like what the hell am I doing there you know okay so that was the gay boys but um after all the clubs and everything are finished for the night so this is at about like 2 or 3 a.m and and the clubs are starting to mellow down people are leaving you know you can see the bar people are like cleaning up their bottles and and their equipment and everything and dousing things down 
and it's a time for everybody to leave and go out, right? And this is the part where I learned something really important about the lady boys and the transsexuals. Hi, you're just in time. Mindy. Okay, so walking outside the club, let's just say it's Kaosan Road, or it could be Sukhumvit, it could be one of those very popular roads. Okay, coming out, going into the street, there's drunken foreigners, there's drunken Thai people, there's drunken foreigners with each other, there's drunken Thai people with each other, and sometimes there's a mix of drunk foreign and Thai people finding their way home, maybe they're going to 7-Eleven to get snacks, maybe they're going to the street vendors to get snack food, etc. Okay, but what I did notice that some of the most sober people on the street, some of the most sober people on the street were the lady boys. The lady boys. Because they were waiting. They were in the streets waiting for drunken guys to come out of the clubs and the bars so that the ladyboy could start talking to the guy. And because he's in his inebriated state or drunken state, he's more likely to acquiesce or agree to talk to or hang out with this ladyboy that's so keen on talking to him. And the reason why is because they're right. Their chances are higher to meet or connect to a male person, whether it be foreigner or Thai. Their chances are higher to do it at that time because the guy is drunk. And because if it was, if it was daylight and that person was sober, normally that person would walk right by that lady boy would walk straight past the transsexual, walk straight past him. And um, well, it's down to social conditioning and social programming, right? And I think Thai people are used to lady boys and transsexuals. They're used to them. So they might have a chat to them. But Westerners and foreigners, um, the, 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 usual, the, the usual most popular people in Thailand are male and it's male white skinned people from first world countries, um, these, these people would almost never talk, not even look, or maybe glance or look at because they're very gorgeous, right? But they wouldn't stop and have a serious chat to a lady boy or a transsexual because of their own social programming, their own social conditioning from their home countries, right? I mean, if you're from a Christian raised background, how are you going to view talking to a transsexual, an even gorgeous Thai transsexual, in somewhere in, in Bangkok, Thailand? I mean, it might be, it might be interesting for a couple for a couple of minutes, but you wouldn't want to stick around. Um, the, the, there's a lot of gay shaming stuff going on. There's a lot of there's a lot of negative social programming and social what's the word, conditioning, about anybody gay. So then if you have, here's this, a, this drop-dead gorgeous creature who, who's interested in talking to you and they happen to have a male voice. Ooh, that's weird. That's, you know, that's, that's weird for a lot of straight males from Western countries. So, so broad daylight, sober, they would never normally talk to that transsexual. So... The transsexuals, just like the, the Thai uh, cisgender females, are all attracted to white, straight males from other countries. They're, they're all attracted. There's a, there, there seems to be a huge, there's a huge focus point somehow. I don't see it. I don't see it maybe because I've, I've come, I come from it, you know, like if I was, if I was, if I was male, it'd probably go for me too, right? Sure. Anyway, but, but I'm not, so I got to see this other side of it. So basically, yeah, and what I realized was a lot of these lady boys, these lady boys and these transsexuals were gunning, they were focusing on a certain demographic. They're focusing on straight males. 
the Thai transsexual is focusing towards they they ideally ideally want a straight male because that's that's all I ever saw them go for I sometimes I'd be I'd be post club and I'd be you know sitting with my friend on on the curb of the street with a beer kind of thing and I'd just be watching the passing crowd I'd be watching people going past and everything and I'd see this and I'd see like they're just patterns. People have certain habits and, and patterns of behavior, right? And this is what I noticed. The transsexuals and the ladyboys were always, if they could get what they really wanted, it would be a straight male. Because they saw themselves as women or female, and so they wanted a straight male. But the thing is, they also know that the straight male knows that they're not always totally female. They have their male, the, a lot of the ladyboys and transsexuals still have their, let's just say, boy bits. They've got their boy bits still. And, and the people that they want to be with realize this. The straight males realize, well, they know, well, you look like a female, but I'm probably going to, if, if I go home with you, I'm probably going to discover later on that you're something else. And then what do I do? Um, I think some men are sold on, on the exterior and then they go along with it. But this is a sad thing. The male cisgender straight person may see the ladyboy or the transsexual as exceptionally beautiful and very attractive. But it's sort of like an exotic meal, an exotic, something you're trying out that's exotic. You, you, you're interested and maybe you go for it and maybe you try out the whole thing but you just want to do it tonight you just want to do it the one time and then your curiosity is satisfied and then you're good and then you want to go home to your regular fare do you know what I mean mm. and I thought this was kind of sad I thought this was kind of sad because basically these ladyboys, not all of them, not all of them, I'm generalizing now, right? But a lot of them, these ladyboys and these uh, transsexuals, have many of them have done the whole bit. They've totally transformed themselves. They've totally transformed themselves and they've made themselves, they've turned themselves into something that they think the man they want will want. They've turned themselves into that thing. But at the end of the day, if that cisgender male were to ask them, have you ever been a male? Are you able to bear children? Are you, you know, are, are you actually a woman? And the answer at any point is, um, no. They're not gonna go for it, right? Our society of male cisgender people I mean, our world is geared for them, geared towards them. All the industries, you know, if you look at the six industries everywhere, it's all geared towards them. They're, they're spoiled as it is. You know, they, they get, especially the white male, <laughs> spoiled to a fault. <laughs> it's, it's insane. And so if, if a white cisgender male is, is and now, now keep in mind, that they're picky enough about women as it is. The white cisgender male is, I'm not going to say younger generation, like millennials, I don't know so much, but definitely my age and older, picky as all hell, man. Hang ups from here to Christmas. Oh boy, they can be so much hard work. And this is coming from a, a female that's seen them in, in, in all their different layers and everything. So male cisgender people are extremely picky and have been extremely spoiled and have had exactly what they wanted for a very long time. And then Let's just say, now let's just say this transsexual comes along and says, hi, would you like to be with me? The average cisgender white male, or average, let's just, never mind the colors, let's not talk about colors anymore. Maybe it's any, any cisgender male. It's just going to look at them and go, mm, you look nice and you're probably a very nice person. And I could probably hang out with you one or two nights maximum. But then I want to go back to my regular trope, my regular role, and I want to go back to 
females, like female females, cisgender females. That's just the way they are. It's just the way they're built. I think I saw maybe one, maximum two couples where there was a cisgender male with a lady boy that had probably had a lot of work, had all their work done. Okay, I think I probably saw one serious long-term couple like that. Um, they lived above me. I was living in a little apartment and they lived above me. And the only, like I never heard, the, I, I thought it was a girl, like the lady boy, I thought it was a girl because I never heard her speak until one day I heard an argument. They were arguing and I was like, what's going on? And I heard two male voices. I heard two male voices and I was just like, what? And I realized, oh, that's the guy, it was an American voice. And then, and then it was a male having like, I, I don't know, she was, she was, she was, she was upset about something. She, I'll say she, but you know, she wasn't, she was a lady boy and she still had her male vocals. Of course she's going to. And, um, yeah, it was a male. There's two males up there. I don't know. But the thing was, they made it, they really kept it un, under wraps. They, they really hid their relationship. They didn't hide themselves so much when they were out, but the woman never spoke. She never used, I'm going to say the woman, I mean the lady boy, the, the woman in, okay, the lady boy woman never used her voice outside the apartment. Maybe she would whisper something or maybe she would say something quietly to her male partner, but she never, if she could help it, she would never allow anyone else to hear her, her vocal cords. But inside the apartment, of course she could. And I, I would hear it too sometimes. So that's how I knew that they were, they were um, um, cisgender male and a transsexual male couple. And that was the only one that I saw like that was working that way. And even so they were, they were very shy about their relationship. They were very like covert about it. And again, like this, this made me feel sad because you have this whole spectrum of humans who feel like they're not happy in their male form, but they're attracted to the cisgender male. So they think, okay, let me give that, let me give them what they want. They want females. Let me make myself a female as much as I can. Let me change the whole bit. Let me change the goods. Let me change the hair, makeup, dress, la, la, la. I will give them exactly what they want and that will be it. And that will be enough. It's not. It's not. The average male won't go along with that. And I just saw it happen time after time after time. So, yeah, so you have these people that change their whole bodies. They, have, they go into surgery, they cut their bodies up to pieces to suit the dreams and to suit the expectations of another person. And then in the cold light of day, that person, 95% of the time, doesn't want them is going to say no, needs to be drunk, almost paralytic, to go home with them, to even, I, I guess, I guess what, what the lady boys or what the, what the transsexuals were thinking was, he just needs, he just needs to get to know me, he just needs to go home with me one time and he'll realize how amazing I am, and never mind the, the, the sex part of it, but maybe, you know, she just really just wants to be a wife. She just wants to be a wife at home. She wants to, you know, cook for him, like the traditional wife role. That's what I mean. She wants to be the traditional wife at home. She wants to cook and clean and she wants to do things for him and then look pretty and beautiful and all that jazz. But in the cold light of day, the person that she's changed everything for doesn't want her. And I saw this happen time after time, 
after time. And it always left me feeling so heartbroken for them. I, 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 even, I want to become friends with them. I want to like to get to know them. I wanted to, I wanted to figure out what was, you know, the whole thing. But they were never really, it was the same vibe as in, 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 the, uh, in the gay club in Thailand. I, I got a very cold vibe from them. They didn't want to know. They didn't want to know female. They didn't want to know cisgender female. No, not at all. Not, not, not at all. I, I have no interest in you. Not even as a friend. Not even as a friend. Hmm. difficult and so I got to thinking what would be for what they wanted they want cisgender male or they want a male they want biological male to go home to to go home with right if they want biological male to go home with what would be their best option and just from what I saw and what I came to thinking was the best option for pre-lady boy, pre-transsexual would be don't change anything. Stay in your male form, unadulterated, your natural male form. Stay, stay in it and go the gay route. Because those, those guys have no problems finding each other. If you, if you just decided against the whole like change yourself to kind of look exactly like like a like a female a biological female that's a huge risk it's extremely precarious i mean that's for, i don't know if it's always healthy for a person's body i don't even i've heard that there's a shorter lifespan as well that goes along with all of it but i i swear i i think that's what it comes down to like i think their best chances for what they want is to stay in their male state, in their male body, and go the gay route. Go and look for other gay guys with their male bodies, and then that's who they pair with. That looks to me like the most unharmful way of doing things, you know? If you want, if you are a male and you're attracted to the male form, and okay, be feminine, but you don't have to lop all your bits off you know because what happens if on the receiving end that that person decides i don't know i don't i don't like the the prospect of going home with someone who's had to lop their bits off for me to like them you know god <sighs> sort of like it, it hints at a sort of certain level certain degree a certain level of psychological trauma on the person who's had to do it how much of themselves have they had to cut off? How, how much of themselves have they had to sacrifice just to get to something that they think they can now present to the person that they want? And then on the other, on, on the receiving end, you don't even know if that person's going to say yes at the end of the day. Maybe you might even say yes for one night, but then, oh no, you were just an exotic holiday, but I want to go back to my apples and pears that I'm usually used to, you know? <sighs> That's sad. It's really sad. Okay, so there's something as well about hoodwinking. Hoodwinking people. Nobody likes to be hoodwinked. Uh, what I mean by hoodwinking is like deceiving or conning someone or, or, or tricking them into thinking you're something that you're really not. Yeah, I mean... Nobody likes to be misled into anything. For example, maybe someone was advertising what they told you was an Apple Watch or an Apple iPhone. And from the outset, it looked like it on the outside and everything looks, looks cool and swish and fantastic. But then you buy it and then later on you find out on the inside and through certain like examining it a bit further that you find out that it's actually not a real iPhone. It's not a real iWatch. It's not the real thing. It's not what you thought it was. It's not what it was pa being painted up to be. Nobody likes that. Even if you're transsexual, you will understand this part. You don't want to be hoodwinked. People don't like being lied to or tricked or conned. And essentially, what transsexuality seems to be at the moment is men painting themselves up 
to be women. I mean, if the transsexual is not happy just to be called trans, but they want to be called women as well, that's false. Because a woman is the human female with the uterus or the womb, W-O-M-B, hence woman, womb man, womb, the womb that is able to hold the little zygote upon conception and to be able to gestate that zygote into a baby. And then they have the breasts and the breast tissue that also develops and is able to give milk to the baby that's born. They also have a vagina through which the baby can come through. If, if a person doesn't have these items or these organs, they can't really be called a woman. Womb man, womb. And this is the thing. And so you have these trans, transsexual people. Some are very happy to be trans, fine. That they should just have that category and be happy with it. But many of them are saying that they want to be viewed as full women. And on the receiving end of it, they want their partners to be cisgender men. And they want their partners, the cisgender men, to want them and love them the same as they would real cisgender women. But the thing is that transgender person, that transsexual person, is selling themselves as a real woman, but if you had to look inside their body, they're really not. Maybe the outside, maybe you've got the, the, the silicon implants and maybe you have a, a vagina that's been crafted quite well. Could you have a baby? It's the iPhone thing, keep coming back to the iPhone thing. Would you want to buy a fake iPhone? I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay a lot of money for this. I'm going to put, invest a lot of time and money into this. And then you get it and you discover, oh, it's, it's, it's not the real one. How do you feel? That's what I'm talking about. There's something about nobody wants to be hoodwinked. And, and that's what seems to be happening here. The transsexual people seem to, not all of them, not all of them, but a lot of transsexual people are expecting the cisgender people to just accept them as a real woman and they're they're just not they don't have the organs maybe on the outside they look all all womanly and everything but they're not all the way through they've never gone through that puberty as a, as a female they've never had periods you know yeah so if you are considering going the transgen transsexual route and switching or you're considering going ladyboy, but you're not doing it for yourself, you're doing it in the hopes of getting a certain person. Do not do it. Do not do it. Just go gay. If you're male and you like males, go gay. You don't need to. I don't need to chop yourself up. You shouldn't have to chop yourself up to love and be loved. Don't chop yourself up to love and be loved.